Well, today is Friday on the Crazy Picker Life, and today we're going to talk about some qualities that I would say are important if you're in your own business, maybe if you're in sales, maybe if you're running a department of a bigger company or corporation. They're certainly important in running a picking business, a picking business, a buying and selling business. Today on The Crazy Picker Life with Wheeler, Dealer, and Banana Peeler. Welcome fellow pickers and would-be adventurers and small business owners <laughs> and leadership type people. Crazy Picker Life, Dealer here. Friday edition. I got rolling right there in my intro before the crazy picker life and I forgot I should probably uh, do my intro. <laughs> so it's Friday. I uh, got a lot going on today. Just got done wrapping up uh, orders this morning and it's into the afternoon. Good order flow. Pushing 20 orders today. Whatever. Buy, sell, wash, <laughs> Wash, rinse, repeat, pick well, list often, all that kind of good stuff. So on Fridays, typically I've got a window in the afternoon, at least this time of year, where the house can be quiet and I'm free for inter from interruptions. That does not happen very often around here. Our uh, family size, our activity size in the house our size of the house, all the stuff that's going on, business, home, school, and family does not allow me to get a moment of, of sleep unless I time it or hide from it. So <laughs> this is it. Now, a lot of times I'm going to have a, a topic that I can point to uh, that's relevant to picking, relevant to small business, relevant to our success here at the Crazy Picker Life, and I like to share that. Fridays seem to be the time to do that. I'm not sure if I'll do that every Friday, but so far that's it. So today's topic, get re getting right into it, launching right into it, and I wanna preface it by just saying, I enjoy sharing this information. If you can pick a couple nuggets out of it for your own life, your own business, something you can think about, reflect on, integrate, great. This is not supposed to be uh, some overbearing uh, discussion. I'm not supposed to be an expert that this is the only way to do it. This is my experience. This is some of the things that have happened in my life that have made me think about certain things. This gives me a chance to talk it, reflect it, think about it. Uh, hopefully it's valuable. It is my experience. The disclaimer is, if you like it, great, use it. If you don't like it and you want to throw me in a volcano, <laughs> there's one up there somewhere in Montana that's percolating away, a, a uh, put a comment down below, that's fine. If you like the video, you know, give it a thumbs up, leave me a good comment. This YouTube platform is an open discussion. I think our country is going wacko about people not being able to, to say things and put their opinions out there, uh, project some things out there for the people who want to hear them. If people don't want to hear them or disagree with you, that's okay. But I still think we should share our experiences. We should have open dialogues about things. We should have discussions that are valuable. And that's sort of what this is about. There's a lot of things that this is about. But uh, I run a small business with my family. I buy and sell things for a living. Uh, I think family's important. I think small business in this country is important. I think uh, our country, as it sits, the United States of America is important. If you live in another country, maybe you feel that way about your country. So I want to do my part to help that. <laughs> I want this to continue. I don't want to lose the entrepreneurial uh, mindset in this country. So I'm going to talk about three things. I'm going to try to keep it to an hour. 
as if that ever works, but I'm going to keep it to an hour. Uh, that'll give me, you know, enough energy to get through my day, go out to eat with my honey, do some more sorting so I can get some good items for Wheeler to list, keep that project going, maybe do some school with the kids. You know, there's a lot of things to do. Go for a walk with my wife. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So an hour. I'm going to talk about attitude as it relates to uh, picking and small business and how I see that as an asset that you're either uh, you're either projecting it in the right way or the wrong way. Let's just say that. I'm going to talk about big picture and focus. Big picture thinking and then focusing. Big picture thinking. <laughs> wow. Big picture thinking. Say that ten times and focus, how those interrelate. I'm also gonna talk about time management. And really, I think all these things tie together. There's plenty of information out there about attitude. There's plenty of thinking out there about leadership mindset and then laser focus to get things done. There's plenty of information out there about time management. Uh, I've been looking at all those subjects for years. I've read different books and uh, listened to different talks and tapes, cassette tapes in the old days and CDs and online. And everybody has certain things that cross over. They seem to be consistent. However, people have different opinions. They uh, emphasize certain things. They de-emphasize cer certain things. They point fingers. No, don't do that. Do this. Do this. Blah, 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 blah. This is my take, okay? And I don't have anything as far as notes. This is free flow. I'm not a professional speaker, obviously. <laughs> and I've got the notes just of the headings so that I can keep it uh, keep it tighter and if I forget what the heck I'm talking about I can go back and look attitude big picture focus time management okay attitude now attitude can mean a lot of things a lot of people project and think that attitude is you're happy all the time happy 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 all the time nothing gets me down if it does I smile my way out of it I talk happy, I inflect happy, I got a smile on my face, I walk like I'm having the best day of my life all the time. I get it. I get it. I can't do it. I don't want to do it. So for me, um, attitude means a slightly different thing. I believe that if you are on the other end of that and you're negative all the time, you're going to miss opportunity for sure. I think a discerning good attitude is probably a better, uh, a better approach. A problem-solving good attitude is probably a better approach. Uh, skeptical is kind of a, a negative word. But a skeptical good attitude is probably a good approach. So my idea of, of attitude is a little bigger picture. It's not, it's not like uh, I see a rusty trailer like the one I bought the other day. And when I see it, all I see is the perfect, like it came out of the box toy from the 1960s. And what I just bought is going to be the jewel of all picked items. <laughs> when I see that rusty trailer, I see a couple of things. I don't see junk. I see something that I recognize as something somebody wants. It's got a little scarcity uh, from experience. I see that it is something that was destroyed a lot. Not a lot of them were made. I see that somebody is going to see their childhood in there. Somebody's going to see, I want to restore this thing. Somebody's got the truck body and wants the back. My attitude is, once I recognize that thing, is I see it. I see where I'm going with it, realistically. 
I'm going to list that as it is and it's going to be good money. And a lot of people would see that item and pass it by. Too big to ship, too heavy to ship, too rusty, the door's destroyed, the wheels are missing, uh, you know, it looks like a pile of junk. So they pass it by before they even let their mind say, hey, there's an opportunity here. Now, if it happens to be um, an item, and, and this, is, this is why I recognized it as a decent item, even though I didn't know about it specifically. I, didn't, I wasn't able to see a name on it. It was through experience. It was through really having a good attitude as I went through 100, 200 lookups in the toy category. Every time I saw something that looked vintage and had a price tag on it was for sale and i thought hey is this the piece i look it up and i'm like oh it goes for 20 bucks plus shipping in good condition there's a hundred of them listed there's 30 sold it's not that great and then i start seeing them everywhere and i'm like okay they're everywhere you know that was a popular toy uh you know people are selling them people are buying them but not at a fast enough rate then I go on to the next thing. Okay, I see this metal big crane thing. I'm like, whoa, I've never seen one of those before. And I go through the same process. And, and sure enough, the mint ones go for 125 bucks. But there's a million of them that are crap that go for next to nothing. Then you start going through the whole idea of, hey, it's not old enough. It's not new in box. Hey, it's not from the right uh, maker. They made too many of them. Hey, it's obscure. Collectors love this one. I started getting some hits or misses, and I started to understand uh, where the money was, right? But if you have a bad enough attitude, you might go through that three, four, five times, and you might say, there ain't no money in these pressed steel toys. You know, they got to be mint. They got to be new in box. Everybody's asking too much for them. Uh, da, 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 da. Instead of taking the time as you're going through these different categories and you're out picking over the years, this could happen over the years, to find, hey, here are the jewels. Here's the ones that you need to, to zero on. The problem-solving attitude that I'm talking about is realizing big picture that that's a process. It's a process of realizing that out of all the possible, I'm just talking about like steel toys, the tractors, the bulldozers, the pickup trucks, the trucks, the emergency vehicles, the horse trailers, the semi trucks, all these things that they made in the 50s, 60s, 70s before that, they make them after that, they get cheaper as they come newer, they go into plastic, all those things that people had and a lot of them were played with outside. I'm just talking about this category for example, but these are things you'll run into, right? A lot. But I'm saying that out of the, the 100% of those, maybe 5% are the money makers. And if you focus on, hey, I'm running into all the bad ones, don't ever run into all the good ones, you might not have the problem-solving attitude to see that thing through and when you run into the 5% you may turn the other way. And there are people out there of course that specialize but if you're a generalist you need to be able to see that 5% in a lot of different categories and when you run into it a little bing needs to come up. <laughs> Whatever that is, right? So if it does and you run into it and it looks like a rusty piece of garbage to a lot of people in fact the trucks down there today are still sitting there the, the cabs and things like that i passed on those even i had to go back and say is the cab to this thing there and it wasn't they had some other ones i was like yeah i'm not i'm not into it i should probably buy them all and sell them in a lot I uh, could probably turn a $20 buy into a $50 plus shipping if I was into that. But I decided not to. I was looking for the specific 
buy it for three, four dollars, adds fifty dollars to the value of this thing. I talked about it in the last video, right? I, if I couldn't do that, I wasn't, I wasn't worried about it. It wasn't there. So, in that particular category, every time I run into these things, a lot of times I'm running into the ninety-five percent, and I'm like, okay, I'm not going to let that get me down. I'm a problem solver. My problem is. I've seen most of this stuff out of there and how I solve it is when I run into the 5% or something that fits that category, either age-wise, look-wise, type, like these motorhomes and trailers are a good example in that category. Uh, you know, something that's, that has got age but is really nice condition. Uh, tractor sometimes, there's some tractor stuff that's pretty good that's from the 80s and before. When I run into that stuff that's going to be in that 5% category, I go for it. I look at it. If the price is right, I'll probably spring on it. Sometimes I can look things up, sometimes I can't. But the attitude in the picking, the buying and selling game, and this can transfer to sales or any other small business, you're going to have 100% of things that you run into or happen to you. And you need to filter down to the ones that make you the most money. It doesn't mean if it's people you're dealing with that you have to punch the other 95% in the face to get rid of them just to get to the right clients. But you need to deflect that. You know, in, in the sales game, when you're talking to people, and, and this happens to us too, we'll be asking people if they have cameras. Do you have cameras? Heck yeah, everybody has cameras. They have cameras five generations back that they just threw in the closet because they didn't know what to do with them. And when they pull them out, they're not the ones we want 95% of the time. And so when those people have bad cameras, a person who doesn't have a good win-win attitude, a problem-solving attitude, might be like, oh no, I don't want that crap and slap them in the face more or less with your attitude, right? Well, you think that person, two more sentences in the conversation, is going to want to deal with you and say, but my grandfather has a whole closet full of Leicas and Nikons and Canons, and boy, we don't know what to do with that. Because you just crapped on this person about their little point-and-shoot camera, they aren't going to open up in two more sentences two more breaths that they got something but if you let them down with a good attitude and say no you know that's not exactly what we're looking for um those were made mass produced and uh they're not you know they're not what we're looking for if you're cordial to them now that was just off the cuff and every time i I try to have win-wins, I make conversation, and a lot of times it doesn't even dawn on that person until two minutes later when you're checking out with something else, they're like, light bulb, oh, but my uncle, let me get your name or number, or he's sitting right over there, you might want to ask him, whatever. If you've left that conversation intact, you're better off. Now, somebody with a non-win-win, a little bit of a bad attitude, a little bit of a, oh, you just have that crap. No, forget it. I'm only searching for this 5% and you're stupid. <laughs> you're not going to, you know, you're you're going to go down the hill. So, I think I think you're following me. Okay? Now when we do find the 5%, you also got to kind of hold in your emotions because you can get excited and then you can be overbearing and and too excited and then that smile comes on like you just had your greatest thing. Some of that you got to hold back till you're back home, right? Problem solving attitude. Win win attitude. Treat people right. Think about things uh, in a bigger picture so that you don't get, you know, okay, bad attitude is a selfish attitude, first of all. If you're only thinking about your motivation yourself, sure. I'm out there to make money and lo and behold the person that's selling stuff they're somewhat there to make money some more than others some are just want to get rid of their junk some want to 
take their cool stuff that they no longer have room for and get it to somebody else that's going to appreciate it. There's, there's a lot of selling motivations. I'm out there to make money. However, my attitude needs to be in check so that I recognize whatever it takes to make a win-win. Okay. And again, this can transfer to the sales game. This can transfer to uh, a department full of employees. This can transfer to if you're running a pizza place. If you are the leader of your business, if you're a one-person business or you have employees, or if you're a one-person business that works with other people in the buy-sell thing, which most people in the buy-sell thing do, you always, always have to look for the win-win. A lot of people, and I, you know, it's hard, it would be hard to talk with those people. They don't know what win-win means. They are only seeing this far away. And even if it's farther, you can always expand the win-win. Now, I think you maybe can go too far with it. Like, like too happy. Oh, you don't have a point and you just have that point and shoot. Oh, let me let me touch it. It's so wonderful, but not for me, but I can appreciate it. Oh, oh, oh let me take your picture. Let me take a selfie. I mean, you know, <laughs> if that's your thing, you know, have at it. But there's there is this there is this happy medium, right? So attitude is practiced. Win-win is practiced. I like problem solving. If somebody's selling something and I'm buying it, it can be a it can be a two-step thing. If they're selling something that's in the category that I like, but it's not the quality I like, I can strike up a conversation with them and find out if they know where more of that stuff is. I don't have to buy that one. Where's more of it? It's a it's an opener. If they have the stuff I want, then I need to talk with them enough so that I can make that thing mine. And then I'm finding out if they have more of it. But it's a win-win. I'm not trying to beat somebody down. I'm not trying to leave there, ha, 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 I won and you lost. <laughs> it, that's, a, that's a bad attitude. That's a, that's a selfish attitude. So develop your attitude. Now, a lot of this just keeps pouring out, you know. I just keep pouring this stuff out and yeah, it feels a little like rambling, but again, um, A, it's my experience and, and B, it's working for us. Some of it. Now, do I have a, I'm going to end in this. Do I have a good problem solving win, win attitude every minute of every day? No. You know why? Because it takes energy. It takes energy for me. By nature, I think um, I have some negativity and some skepticism and uh, some fear and some uh, selfishness and all that. I mean, I have some of that in me. I have some of that I have to overcome. Uh, at times in my life, I think I was worse. At times in my life, I think I was better. So for me, it's a day-to-day -day thing. It's not, a, it's not an automatic thing. There are people that, um, at least on the surface, you know, you don't know because you don't necessarily spend 24-7 with them, but there are people that really seem to have that down. And for the most part, it helps them. I just, I personally don't like it when it seems to get more fake. I've been, and, and i got to say this, I've been in certain sales situations where the person that I'm working with is very professional, one step towards fake, but very professional. And they do the dance between a little bit fake and professional, and they take you through the process. i got to pause. They take you through the process, and when you're done, you're like, they were very professional. I appreciated that. We completed the transaction. I got the desired result. They were a little bit fake, but all right, that's what it was. You recognize that you went through a sales process. And I don't think 
people have that same re feeling when they're done with me. I genuinely like talking to people. I genuinely have an agenda when I'm talking to them, but I don't like to cross the line. I, I don't know. Maybe it's because I've been through that process on the other end of it, like the car process. There's the, there's the bad car salesman, and then there's the professional car salesman that takes you through the process. And when you're done, you got the car, you liked it, but you realize I just got put through a process. And sometimes those people are a little too fake for me. I, I don't like to cross that line. I like to, you know, I like to leave people as good or better than when I met them. <laughs> and I want them to remember me. And a lot of times, if I'm on my game, and by my game, it means I'm in the mode, the buying and selling, I'm out there dealing and wheeling and talking and da 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 da. I do think they remember me. Now, I'm not always like, this. I'm not always fired up. I'm not always in the, the, the mode. Sometimes I want to be low key. Sometimes I'm low energy. Sometimes I'm, I'm out there and just going through it for a while gets me woke up. So if you see me out there and I'm not dynamic, I am not always that way. But if I am in my best element, I'm that way. I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying the process. I'm trying to do win-win. I like what I'm looking for. I like I'm, that I'm out there. That's that is that is when I'm at my 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 peak. And a lot of times, strangely, that's when I uncover the best stuff. I think there's a correlation. <laughs> Sometimes I go out there and I'm like, oh my gosh, it's so early. I feel like crap. What am I doing out here? You know. And going through the process, I slowly kind of wake up. Hey, this ain't so bad. Let's go. <laughs> so if you, if you run into me in one of those times, don't shake your finger at me too much. Dealer, I thought you were win-win. What the heck? <laughs> so it's not universal for me. Big picture versus focus. Okay. We are taught from when we start to focus on the task at hand. A lot of times we start working for somebody else. A lot of times we're working for a grade in school. We're working for a teacher. We're working as part of something. We're uh, focused on our work. You know, keep your nose in your book. Da 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 da. There is, there is a certain training that has you focus and be be a department be a part of a department be a part of the process be an employee be a follower there there is that uh thing that happens and then some of us want more some of us see the big picture some of us learn about the big picture some of us realize that you cannot be in this focus all the time some of the time you need to stop and look at a bigger picture okay so if you're running your own business uh, or on the flip side of that if you're part of a business and you think you're focusing too much and you want to know more about the big picture you need the big picture uh, that that I see a lot of people missing the big picture point in their business from time to time. In fact, uh, you know, 90% of businesses fail in the first 10 years, 95%, I don't know, it depends on where you get your statistics. And you can almost tell, and I'm trying to think exactly who does that talk about the person just having the entrepreneurial seizure and going out and starting a business and realizing that uh, their specialty was good but they didn't know how to run a business they didn't see the big thing I think um, oh it's joggling around in the old head here maybe it'll come to me I'll try to think that out sorry not adding value at the moment so I like listing. I really do. I like picking. I really do. If I had to choose one over the other, I would be picking 
90% of the time and listing 10% of the time. I realize that picking well and listing often are keys to this business, but it is not everything in this business. It is not the wide view of the business, okay? And if you do mostly good picking, and if you do a lot of listing, and you're paying attention, your picking will become better and your listing will become more focused. But it, that's still not the big picture in the business, okay? There's a number of things you need to juggle and they're, they're timely. You can't miss the big picture opportunities to uh, join the A club, <laughs> okay? I mean, if you get so into your picking that you're out all day when you should have been out half the day, you forget to send your orders out for the day, that's not good. Or if you forget to pick your kid up from school, that's not so good. Or if you miss supper regularly, that's not so good. Or if you forget to pay a bill, that's not so good. Or if you forget to talk to somebody that's close to you that day when you needed to, but you got sidetracked on picking and you did good picking, that's not so good. If you went picking all day and pick so much that you overfill your area that you're allowed for that or overspend your budget, that's not so good. So pick well encompasses the big picture, okay? Pick well does mean pick up something profitable, but then the whole big picture around that is it has to fit within some of your other things. Now, this does not mean if it's 11.30 a.m. and you stumble on one of your top 10 pick things or areas or pick loads or buckets of stuff, one of your top 10 that you ever hit in your life, it doesn't mean that you walk away because you have to be home at 11.45. Now, if something is really urgent at 11.45, the big picture says, how am I going to capture this and get the heck to where I'm supposed to go? Because there are some things that are more important than a top 10 picking, you know. There are some things that are more important, so you'll have to decide. But if it's, if it's 11.30 and you just ran into the big pick, but you cannot uh, you're supposed to be somewhere else, something else is supposed to be going on, you don't have the money, whatever it is, when you run into that, the big picture has already thought, okay, what is my plan B to handle this? I'm not leaving this stuff. I gotta figure out a way to get it. The big picture knows where you're gonna go get the money, knows what you're gonna say to the people to hold the items, knows you're gonna give them your watch or your shoes or your whatever, <laughs> who are you going to call? Whatever you need to do uh, to make that happen. But the big picture includes things like informing the people that you're bumping up the line on your time frame uh, that you're not going to be there because you ran into this thing. Uh, you know, what are you going to do with the appointments you had? What are you going to do to catch up on the things that you were supposed to catch up on? Where the heck are you going to house this stuff? Uh, where's the money coming from? How are you going to haul it? Whatever, right? So if that catches you off guard, life can't stop. So you do damage control. Big picture is damage control on a situation like that, for example. But if you're not thinking big picture, you might run into that stuff and do one of two things. You might crash your life to make it happen which is probably not so good, or you might walk away, which is probably not so good. So pick well encompasses the big picture. It also encompasses find the right stuff. And we could go off on pick well, and maybe I should sometime. That's a pretty good topic. What does pick well mean? And really talk about some of the ins and outs of picking well. What are some of the downsides and things that make you not pick so well? And what are some of the things that contribute to picking well because it's a it's a you know pick well uh, everybody thinks that's a little bit different thing but what what do I think that's about what I can bring to the table <laughs> so 
Now, big picture and focus. Let's go back to this example. It's 11.30 a.m. You just ran into 10 boxes of Lionel trains, let's say. They're from the 40s. 10 boxes. Each box has 50% new old stock, 50% accessories that are open. 10 boxes sitting there at somebody's rummage sale and... You, you know you're on a you're on a motorcycle so you can't take 10 boxes home and the price is right but you're 20 bucks short and uh there's people milling all around you uh somebody's gonna buy this thing if you don't you might look it up a little bit you, you know you know that for the 200 dollars they're asking you know there's at least a thousand dollars of sales there maybe two maybe five okay I mean you know this is this is a score for whatever reason uh, you look around and and everything else sort of fits it looks like somebody who's a scrapper or a junker and they got some other vintage stuff around it looks like maybe they cleaned out a storage locker or an estate or something, and this is something they found. They don't look technology. They don't look like they look stuff up. They look like they maybe have been in the same clothes all week. I'm not putting those kind of people down, by the way. I'm just saying that this stuff sitting there makes sense. It's not like it's hot. It's not like it's stolen. It's not like it's um, a fake or empty boxes. You've 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 decided that this is a good deal in fact it's one of the top 10 things you've ever run into you will run into things like this but you don't have transportation you don't have enough money you have 180 bucks in there asking 200 maybe you can get it for a deal maybe you can't there's people milling all about it's 11:30. this stuff's still sitting there who knows right now my example is it 100 percent legit i'm just trying to make a point at that point the big picture should help you start putting the steps together to get this thing from here in your hands to home, right? And then the focus of it, you need to start acting. You need to start getting this going. If you go and walk away and make a 15 minute phone call and you come back, that stuff's going to be gone, right? So that's not what you want to do that's not focus you need to be you, you know you need to be firing how am I gonna lock this stuff up so what do you do well the first thing I do I don't leave that stuff I I put one of those boxes part in my hand or body I'm I'm on it <laughs> I'm laying on this stuff practically it's mine anybody comes over and gets too into it it's like I'm buying this nicely you say that too I'm buying this or I bought this. Identify who the heck is selling it. Get them over there. Hey, what do you know about this stuff? I see you got a price of 200. Are you negotiable? That might solve it right there. Okay? You've already decided you'll call somebody to get this stuff home. It doesn't matter you're on a motorcycle. Uh, you got an appointment in an hour. You're starting to look at your watch. You might need to make a phone call or text and say, I got to cancel that. Whatever. But big picture is... I'm doing it, and then you start making the plan. What's step one, two, three, four, five? What I would do is I get the person over there. I'd try to lock up the deal. I'd try to buy it. Then I'd move it to the sidewalk away from the sale, so I don't got people looking through it. Then I'd start making phone calls. Hey, I need I need you to come down here and help me pick this stuff up. Or you can go to the person and say, Look, I bought this. I'm on my motorcycle. How late are you open? Can you put sold on this? Can you? leave that back there I'm gonna come back in my car in, in in 20 minutes an hour two hours that kind of thing I mean this this is this is how this is how we use our attitude big picture thinking and then focus to get things done right if you run into that kind of deal and you constantly uh, are running into these deals or you're running into these once a month and you're talking yourself out of it Oh, it's too much stuff. I recognize that I could turn $200 into $2,000. It's too much stuff. It's too dirty. 
I don't like the way this looks around here. There's too many people around. Somebody else is going to buy it. I got to be somewhere. I'm on my motorcycle. I don't have enough money. If you're constantly saying those kind of things to yourself, you are talking yourself out of deals. Now, most of the time when I go out, I got enough money to buy something for $200. But what if I spent most of my money that morning and I only have 180 left? I mean, that happens, okay? So it's not like that can't happen. Uh, sometimes I have things going on and so I cut myself too tight. It's not like that can't happen. But you need to have the big enough thinking that if you are going to put yourself in this position of going to the last sale of the day and it's tight on everything you got going, if you run into the right thing, expand it out. Don't talk yourself out of it. Figure out how to do it. I've talked myself out of things once in a while and I do have a few regrets. I try, I try not to do that though. I try not to have regrets, right? Now, little different uh, subject on the big thinking, big picture. If you find yourself constantly making excuses why things aren't getting done, why somebody else in your group should be getting things done, why uh, you don't have good money flow, why your packages are sitting and they're not getting out till the next day, why um, your office looks like crap, stuff piled all over, even if, I mean, some people look at my office and they're like, oh my gosh, how do you operate in there? You got no order on the shelves and things like that. I have enough organization and order in my systems and my shelves to get 20 items out a day from an inventory of 4,000 items. So I may walk into some place where crap is piled everywhere and I may say, how do you do business there? And sure enough, that person gets 20 items out a day efficiently and the customers are happy and they're happy with their system. Who am I to say? But if it's not working for you, if you got too many problems, if all these firefights are happening and you're going from one task to the whatever, you need to put on the calendar with a big ass circle, big picture day. Back away from everything for that day and say, all right, what's not working? Take a deep breath. Start writing down and brainstorming. What's not working? Okay, I'm having some shipping problems. Stuff is not getting out on the day it's supposed to. Okay, I'm having some feedback problems. I'm getting too many neutral and negative feedbacks. Okay, I'm not finding good enough items. I only made two bucks on that. I only made 10 bucks on that. I lost money on this. What the heck's going on? My items are not selling and when they do, I'm not making much money. Take a step back and write down everything that is not working, okay? This whole day, you're gonna start prioritizing that list and you're gonna start making a plan by looking back up at a, at a thousand or 10,000 foot level. You need to start looking at some of those things and stitch in time saves nine, you know? This has been going on for too long. You've been too focused on each little thing and you haven't taken the step back and looked at how the puzzle all goes together so that it all works and it all fits. I have to force myself to do that sometimes because I go into certain parts of this business that are important. However, they are not the big picture. Okay? If I go list for a couple days and all I do is list but I don't look up ever at anything else going on, stuff starts to happen. And so when you are just one person in this business, or even if you're somebody that's working with some other people in your business, but you get too into something, you got to back up once in a while. That's all I'm saying. And if you're the person that's in charge, uh, that's got to happen or you're going you're gonna to have challenges. You're going to have problems. You're going to have things that, that continually... You know, it's like a it's like a little bit of a hit in the gut every once in a while, and you're like, you might be like, why is that happening? 
and then go on with your focus, right? Why is that happening? Why is that happening? If it hits you often enough and hard enough, you might, you know, you might go investigate. But if you go investigate and then you narrow in and just take care of that for a couple of days, you're going to lose sight of everything else. So I don't know why some people have the tendency to focus so much and miss stuff. I don't know why. Some people do. And even people, if you're a big picture person, and then you get finally down to something focusing, I don't know why, then we, you know, it's a, <laughs> there are people that have manual focus cameras and there are autofocus. And reality in your business is you need to have a little bit of both. You need to manually focus your attention on things that are important. But then you also need to manually unfocus or wide focus your camera and take a look at the big picture. And then if you're getting good at this business, your autofocus should also be working. You need to zoom over there. Your autofocus says, okay, dealer, and you see it. <laughs> and you process it. And then your your autofocus should back you back up. And you should be like, uh-oh, need to see that over there. <laughs> and then you don't want to get too much firefighting. So, <sighs> This is a dynamic thing. If you're the decision maker in your business, which it's likely that you are, it's a dynamic thing. It can change by the minute. It can change by the hour. However, being aware of the fact that you're the last in line, you're the big picture person. If you don't see it, it doesn't exist until it bites you, right? Now let's say let's say let's say you're just a lister in the business like Wheeler in my business his main focus is listing. Now he's very important in the picking end of this and he does a lot of other things in this business that uh, maybe he doesn't even know and I don't maybe give him enough credit for. However, I bounce a lot of ideas off him. He's very knowledgeable in many parts of the business. He just doesn't do many parts of the business. But let's say, for example, 90% of what you do is listing. It doesn't even hurt if you back up from that and just ask questions of the other people that are in your business, how does what I'm doing here interact with the bigger picture? I think it would be wise once in a while to back up, even if you're somebody that's into a focused type situation, and ask the people around you, hey, uh, you know, how's my performance? How's it affecting this? What could I do better? Let's get some stuff flowing into my, my focused area in a better way that I can handle it. How about when my stuff goes out from my area? How can I make that integrate better with the bigger picture? I mean, there's things you can still do. It's a mindset, right? Gotta pause again every 20 minutes. This thing turns red. Brain drain. Okay, so I don't know if there was value there. I again I, I feel keyed up and I feel like I'm ranting. I hope there's some nuggets in there. And really, I'm not teaching most of you anything you don't know. All I'm doing is bringing some of it to the surface. Okay? I need to be reminded often about the important things in my business either myself reminding it me or somebody says something to me or I see somebody doing a job and I'm like wow they're doing a good job I need to look at that I need the reminders often in order to maximize myself so I don't get so scattered so some of these things I'm saying I'm saying them to me <laughs> disclaimer this is for me this is as much for me as it is for you <laughs> time management. All right, a lot of lot of different thoughts on time management. People think time management is a lot of different things. When I was younger, I thought time management was how can I work a hundred miles an hour and every second be doing something that is spot on, arrow in the bullseye of the target. You know, every hand is doing something. Legs are doing something. It's like, you know, one man band. Oh my gosh, I'm getting the most out of this. <laughs> you know, uh, that'll wear you out. So 
life is not to me life is not about going 100 miles an hour getting 100 percent efficiency every second um you know having my shelves with like dewey decimal system type accuracy with a card catalog where i can within two seconds pinpoint where everything is and every you know label is perfect and time management can be that for some people but i find that life is too short to micromanage myself that much and i've read uh the books on time management and the quadrant systems and uh you know there's that bald dude that has the the life management time management thing covey is that his name i'm trying to think of uh, the other one that i like uh, anyway i've read a lot of books especially when i was in my 20s and maybe my 30s and i'll, I'll be i'll be straight after doing the book study on how to be efficient, how to be time management, how to have a good attitude, how to do that, it's not like I need, don't need to be reminded of that anymore, but I applied it so much and I won and I lost and I gained and I lost ground and I saw it the results and I saw the failures and I pushed myself to do it until I almost broke and I broke so many times that now I know more or less what I should be doing. It's not like you can't teach a dog old tricks. I found some of the tricks that work for me and some that I know I should be doing and I do in streaks. I don't necessarily need to read that stuff as much as i used to but i needed to do it in the in the beginning sort of to break free sort of to launch myself into this whole thing okay and i did do that and i think it was because when it, i was early in the game i had some tough times starting my business okay i had some tough times being a salesperson, being good attitude, integrating with other people, being successful. I had dreams and things like that. In the beginning, I needed to learn. <laughs> I needed to change. Oh my gosh. Oh. And now, I don't want to change that much anymore. I'm open to things like that, but I've been through it enough. My game is going well enough for me, right? But if you're not there, if you're not there, you might need to do that. Now, time management for me is really this. Identify the important things in your life, whatever they are. Be real about them, okay? Don't be selfish necessarily, be real. I mean, if your kids are the important thing in your life, Spending 24 hours a day with them seven days a week is probably going to lead you to the poorhouse. They'll probably come take you away. They'll probably take your kids away from you. So you can't take that to extreme, but this time you spend with them, make it quality time, right? That's just an example. So there's reality factors. So identify the important things in your life. Get a reality factor on that. Schedule the things you need to get to get done as priorities to meet the reality factor and the things you want to do in your life and then have the fortitude to stick with it and make make some good habits in your life to get these things done and then i guess the last thing and and maybe there's more steps in here that i could talk about you could probably come up with some i'm just doing these off the cuff have some sort of a check like ask your spouse ask your kids ask your business <laughs> ask your wallet ask your health ask your sanity ask your happiness ask your religion are you are you true to that ask you know have sort of a it's a sort of a working document what's important add a reality factor 
what do you got to do and start doing it develop some good habits have a have a check factor so time management for me is about getting the important stuff done now there are some more specifics to that listen in a pickers game a buying and selling game there are some time factors you need to be certain places at the right time you ever you ever hear that i was at the right place at the right time <laughs> well are you at the right place the right time often enough that's time management right getting your packages out are you timely when do orders come into your business and when do you get them out the sooner you get them out the more accurate you get them out the better in most cases now if, if you're really good at turning your orders around you're gonna run into this and you're gonna say well dealer that's counterproductive <laughs> I don't know what the percentage is 1% 2% if I'm turning orders around the same day 1% or 2% of those orders I have to cancel redo answer a question on them and then it screws up the order I've even shipped things out so fast that one of those things came back to hit me and I'm like, hey, I just shipped your thing out. I'm sorry you made the wrong decision two hours ago and you came back to tell me and I already shipped it out. But if you're too fast, you actually run into that. <laughs> I've run into that. It's a good problem to have, I guess. In our buying and selling business, there are a number of things that make people happy. But I'll tell you what, here's what makes people happy getting the thing that they bought that they want in the condition that they want it and getting it quick doesn't mean you have to send stuff overnight all you have to do is meet or beat the shipping projection time management that's a time management thing what's another time management thing could be a little thing make it to supper on time make it to your places you go on time get there a little bit early and observe people that's a good one you can learn a lot don't drive too fast. Leave early enough. I mean, there's a lot of time management things, okay? Part of the big picture is if we're on these things and you identify what you care about, if there's things like family and friends and business acquaintances, if you value people, time management is one of those things that you need to get off a selfish thing and you need to identify, am I cutting things too tight for other people? Because that will really annoy them. That's one of those things. If people are always having to push you out the door, pull you out the door, if they're always saying, you're late again, da 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 there's some time management things in the big picture scheme of things that you need to look at. So, oh, don't get me started, right? <laughs> <laughs> don't get me started so we are all gifted given 24 hours a day you can cut corners on certain things for a while you cannot exercise you can get less sleep you can take energy drinks and try to boost boost your performance now, here comes my first interruption Okay, I'm getting to the end anyway. So, what was I doing with the fingers? <laughs> I don't even remember. Oh no. So really, um, time management, attitude, big picture focus. The business, the, the self-employed, business deal if you're self-employed if you're part of a small business if you're entrepreneurial you can even have that mindset inside a job situation um, these things that I've been talking about experiment with them no no you know here's here's some people are some people just want to do their own thing and it's not really that they're focused it's just they don't see they don't see we all don't see i don't see 
you know, we don't see our blind spots, right? We don't necessarily see the big picture. And just like I was talking about stepping back from your, from your craziness, plan a day on the calendar, step back, start identifying by brainstorming and then ranking and finding a few things that are really not working in your life business, the integration between your life and your business, your relationships, all that. And then start, you know, start saying, well, what could I do better? What's the end result I'm after? What's not working? Let's start mapping it out, right? You got to step back wherever you're at once in a while and look at the big picture you you really do it can be like this too you can you can lose ground over time because things change things always change for me one of the biggest things that i've noticed that i need to back up and look at the big picture is my family my kids are growing up you know wheeler's 19 he ain't he ain't six no more <laughs> <laughs> he ain't 12 no more. He's not 15 anymore. He's 19. Oh my gosh. Now on the surface, I know that. And I treat him like the young man that he is. I, I include him in things that are different than I used to. Whatever. I'm more candid with him. I'm, I'm more open with him. All that. But, you know, being a father, you remember holding him when he was a baby. First baby. First son. Wow. You know, look at this. <laughs> But that, that has been one of the things, one of the biggest things, because I'm so into it, homeschooling, uh, you know, we eat dinner together, we have work together, we go on vacations together, we exercise together. We're, I'm in it, you know, I'm right here. It's, it's in my face all the time. And I've done this, I've backed up. When I go on a vacation, a lot of times I'll sit somewhere during the downtime of the vacation, I might have a beer, I might have a book, I might have a notepad. I will sit back and I'll just be like, okay, <laughs> you know, what's going on here? I need to readjust. I need to see this in a different light. I need to have a new plan. I need to uh, uh, defuse some of these things. I need to integrate some of these things. I, I think like that. Now, some of that will wear, wear people out. Some, some people aren't wired that way. Some, some people, this, this kind of talk that I'm doing here, it won't hit you. Okay? That's okay. If you're wasting your time, that's don't tune in again. <laughs> if you got a couple nuggets, good. You know? If you got a couple nuggets, that's what we're here for. Our talk like this, you can't expect to solve the world's problems... But maybe, you know, maybe I can make a little difference in something you're doing and ultimately you'll have to take whatever it was and make a little difference. And little differences over time can make big differences. That's another, you know, that's another thing. You make a little change in a couple different areas. There's a multiplying factor people will see it you will see some of the results you might get momentum in a certain area in your business it is little changes over time in a positive it's not tony robbins it's just little changes over time in the right direction towards what's important to you and putting some context and reality on that and then Putting a plan in action. I don't know if these are the same steps. I don't know. The last one was check it all out. <laughs> do it. Just do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Ah, oh, a little scattered. What's new? So if you're a person like me that's a little scattered and a little hyper and full of energy and you get into it and the end result is pretty good and you muscle a thing, few things through and you finesse a few things and you adjust and you take a few hits, take a few, you know, boom, oh, okay, and you readjust and you get through your day, what more can you want? <laughs> what more can you want? That's what it's all about. That's part of what it's all about. I mean, there's some, there's some very important things that you could bring up in life and in the world but really 
we get up in the morning, we experience the day, at the end of the day, you assess, and the next day you get up and do it all over again, right? So, all right, it's Friday. I think I'm going to go out, have some food with Lon tonight, have a beer or two, have some time with the kids, have some time with Wheeler after business hours tonight. And then tomorrow, Saturday, we'll do it all over again. Sunday, we'll probably do stuff with the family, take a low day. Monday, though, we'll be back on the Crazy Picker Life. Monday edition, it'll come soon enough. If this talk was valuable to you, leave me a comment down below. Hit me with something. It doesn't have to be personal. It doesn't have to be deep. Just let me know. Hey, I like that. You know, whatever. If you didn't like it, try to make it constructive. Sometimes I get comments that are fairly pointed and uh, some are just out there and some are not relevant. Some are all right. Constructive criticism, I can take that. After, after you give me the zinger, the constructive kick criticism, say, if I could, I'd throw you in a volcano. <laughs> I like the thumbs up. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for commenting. Thanks for watching. And I hope I helped you. If I did, with just a little piece, that's all I can ask for. If I didn't, try again. Somewhere else or with me. Who knows? I'm going to use this that I just talked about. I'm pretty sure I just woke it up again. Something good will come from this. <laughs> Pick well. List often. Dealer out. Hey, Wheeler. Dealer Production. <laughs>